A leading Māori businesswoman was fined this week after pleading guilty to tax charges in the Tauranga District Court. Beverly Ray Adlim was honoured by the Queen in 2008 for services to business. But on Thursday she admitted she had falsified tax returns, denying the Crown more than $200,000. Tahuri Tumwana was in court. Beverly Adlin was saved the trial of having to plead to all her charges as the judge asked her to simply confirm her guilty plea. In what can only be described as a deal, Adlin pleaded guilty to 24 of the 64 charges against her and the remaining charges were dropped. The court was told by the time the charges had been laid she had already paid half a million dollars to inland revenue to recover the tax, penalties and interest it was after. Her lawyer claimed her cancer treatment had been a contributing factor. While at the same time recognising the background factors of your uh, ill health, your immense loss of uh, mana uh, involved in this case, and the uh, true remorse that has been demonstrated by the fact that you have ultimately resolved all these issues. She was ordered to pay a total of $223,000 in fines, cost and reparation. You may now stand down. While the inland revenue case may be over, Beverly Adlim is still facing a number of Māori land court cases over land trusts she's involved with. As Tahuri Tumwana found, some co-owners are demanding to know what's happened to the wealth generated by their land. There aren't many whānau who can say they have two geothermal power plants operating on their whānau land. Established here in Kawarau, these geothermal plants were the first of their kind in the country. But what should have been a source of pride for the Savage Papakaina Lands Trust has become a bitter dispute that is currently being contested in the Māori land courts in Rotorua. Lawrence Niao and his wife are one of seven Fano landowners who have shares in the land. They shared a vision of setting up an initiative that would benefit all of the Fano who fuck up up here. There is a, uh, some uh, potential and value for the for the Fano there. But uh, it's also, um, now that we've got that plant here, eh, it's also taking away the whenua that we were supposed to build our malai on. Yeah, so just um, probably one sore point. It was a point our parents were looking forward to, uh, for malai to be built here and houses around the malai. It won't happen in my time. That's a bit sad, isn't it? It is sad. They're also frustrated because they say these power stations aren't generating any significant benefit to them. So who do you blame? Well, I, I think there'd be more than one to blame. I think there'd be um, several people, really. One would be uh, uh, Beverly Adlin because it was built to her advantage, as I see it. In the early years, Beverly Adlin was a rising star and was instrumental in bringing together the communities of not only Kawaro, but also the wider Bay of Plenty. A pioneer as a radio broadcaster in the 80s, she also led her iwi of Ngāti Tū Wharetuaki Kawaro to a treaty settlement in 2003 valued at $10 million. In 2008, she received the Queen's Honour for her services to business. A fearless businesswoman, she was respected nationally and internationally, but back at home some whānau say they felt betrayed. This was the project that started it all, TG2. Bay of Plenty Electricity built the station on the Trust's land in 1992 and in return agreed to pay a lease and ongoing royalties for the geothermal water. But the monthly payments of $20,000 never ended up in the Trust's account. 16 years down the track, Lawrence took his concerns to the Māori Land Courts. It was there in 2008 that Beverly Adlam's lawyer admitted the money had been going into her own accounts. She claimed with the full knowledge of the other trustees. 
There was a common understanding that Ms Adlam was acting on behalf of the trust. Ana kariro te a tūnga o te heo mana me te hekere tari, iaia tonu. Nā reira a koia tonu te kaiwhakahaere o ngā mea katoa, ko te take i tāi aia, te mahi pera, nā te mea koia tonu i te pupuri i ngā mohi o tanga katoa. Kare noe ho mātou ngā tāngata whaipānga hea ki te whenua, i te mōhio e a hakutia ana e rātou. By 2008, an estimated $3.8 million had been paid by BOP. The court ordered that all future payments be put into a trust until it had sorted out who was entitled to what. The court suspended Beverly Adlam from the trust until it sorted out who had done what. The case is still ongoing four years later. The second power plant was established by a company called Geothermal Developments Limited and once again Beverly Adlam asked the trust to lease land for it to be built on. But Lawrence Niao claims at the time he had no idea that Geothermal Developments Limited was Beverly Adlam's company and that she was the sole director and shareholder. I think the whole family put their faith into her. Mm. Because at that time, she was the one that um, uh, had that business acumen uh, more than any of the family did. In 2010, Beverly sold her shares in Geothermal Developments Limited for $42 million. We've made repeated attempts to get Beverly Adams' side of the story. We even went to her house. We were told she wasn't at home and refused all our requests for an interview. And what of the whānau owners of this land? They've been left battling each other through the Māori land courts in claim and counterclaim. Lawrence has spent years asking for records and accounts, trying to find where the benefits of these developments have gone. A separate Māori land court case is seeking more than $40 million from Beverly Adlam. There's little doubt that without Beverly Adlam's business acumen, these developments would never have gotten off the ground. She made the deal, she found the broker's foot, she made it happen. Why shouldn't she receive the benefits from it? I think she did get a benefit. She did get a benefit out of it. But um, the rest of the benefit should have been, um, should have been shared amongst the whole family. It should have also been a benefit for the whole family rather than just for yourself. Now we should be clear, not all the Fano involved in this saga agree with Lawrence's view. Sam Barnes, the chairman of the Hewiti Fano, asked us not to run this story six days ago, but turned down our, our request to provide his perspective, saying due to the tight time frame Mr Barnes was provided, this was not possible. We've tried to get balance in this story and we acknowledge that it's a complex issue still before the Māori Land Court. But the situation this whānau find themselves in raises questions that affect many Māori land owners. How do owners keep trusts accountable for what's happening on their land and why do disputes take so long to be resolved? Those are questions we'll be raising in the coming weeks. If you have questions about Māori land issues you're having, please let us know.